In the first part of my talk, I will, I'd like to introduce you to the field of machine learning. We'll talk about what it is. And then we'll focus our attention on a specific machine learning algorithm called Adaboost. It is very good at what it does. Um, and we'll investigate the reasons for why it is so good. In the last part of my talk, I'd like to share my perspective on how faith fits into this picture. And we'll see how the reasons why Adaboost performs so well, how those reasons reflect principles of the Christian faith. So let's start off with what is machine learning? Machine learning is simply computers learning patterns. Computers learning patterns. Let me give you a few examples of computers learning patterns and how that is relevant in your life and in mine. One example of computers learning patterns is in predicting movie ratings. If you watch 50 movies and you rate all 50 of those movie, movies, a computer algorithm can learn all sorts of interesting patterns about you. It might notice that you really like Japanese films or that you really like films by Steven Spielberg, that you really like films that have Tom Cruise in it. Maybe it notices that you love action films but you hate romantic comedies. And if it notices these, enough of these patterns and trends about you, then given a new movie, which you haven't seen, it can make a pretty intelligent prediction about how much you're going to like this film. And this algorithm is very useful to companies like Netflix. Another example of computers learning patterns is product recommendations. A few days ago, I opened up my Amazon account, and this is one of the things that I saw. It says here, recommendations for you in books. And if you'll notice, all of the books that they recommended to me are books by Charles Spurgeon. So apparently, there is some machine learning algorithm out there that, that noticed that I'm a fan of Charles Spurgeon. And so Amazon decided to focus all of their advertising power into books by Charles Spurgeon. I mean, based on the things that we buy, on the websites that we visit, even the words that we write in our emails, companies can learn patterns about our behavior in order to direct to direct their advertising towards our interests. And one final example of computers learning patterns is in the field of medicine. Imagine for a moment that you are a hospital. You have a big database of 100,000 patients. And for each of these patients, you have a lot of information about their medical history. You divide these 100,000 patients into two groups. One group are the 5,000 people who have a particular type of cancer. And the other group are the other 95,000 people who don't have this type of cancer. And then you start to study patterns and trends among these two different groups. Maybe you notice that the people that have this type of cancer, a lot of them grew up in the same geographical location. Or maybe you notice that a lot of them have the same type of employment. Maybe you notice that they have unusually high levels of BPA in their body. If you can notice these patterns and trends, we can then identify people who are, have high risk of having this type of cancer. So what the machine learning algorithm actually does is it first learns these patterns and trends, and then when a new patient walks into the office, we can collect a bunch of information about them, about him, such as his age, his weight, his blood pressure, his BMI, does he smoke, how much does he exercise, where does he live, and we can give all of this information to a machine learning <laughs> algorithm. It will crunch a bunch of numbers, and it will spit out a prediction of how much risk this person has of having this type of cancer. Now this box in the middle here, this is what we call a classifier. A classifier is just an algorithm that takes a bunch of information and then it spits out a prediction. Now there are a lot of different types of machine learning algorithms that could go inside this box. Let me give you just one example. One way that you could make this prediction is to play the 20 questions game. The patient walks into the office and the doctor starts asking him a bunch of questions. The first question is, are you over the age of 50? The answer is yes, then you go down the left branch. The next question is, do you exercise more than three times a week? The answer is no, you go down the right branch. The third question is, do you smoke? The answer is yes, you go down the left branch. And you can ask a bunch of questions and you keep going down these branches. And at the very bottom, there will be a number. And what that number says is, I think that this type of person who has these characteristics, I think this type of person has an 80% risk of having this type of cancer. Now this type of approach, this classifier is called a decision tree. 
It's called a decision tree because these branches are sort of like the roots of a tree. Now I'd like to focus our attention on another machine learning algorithm called Adaboost. Before I describe it to you, let me first tell you what some people say about Adaboost. One well-known statistician in the field who has made significant contributions to the field of machine learning um, says this about Adaboost. He says it is the best off-the-shelf classifier in the world. Adaboost is widely considered to be one of the best, if not the best, classifier that is out there. Let me share with you two interesting characteristics about the Adaboost algorithm. The first interesting characteristic is that Adaboost is an ensemble of weak classifiers. Now, this has a lot of jargon, so let me explain what each of these words means. This first word, ensemble, that's just a fancy way of saying a collection. It's a collection of things. It's a collection of classifiers. We saw that a classifier is just an algorithm that takes a bunch of information and it spits out a prediction. So it's a collection of classifiers, and it's a collection of weak classifiers. Now this word weak simply means that each of these classifiers is weak sauce. It just does a really poor job. Recall the decision tree that we, that we looked at, the series of 20 questions? Right? One of these weak classifiers looks like this. It asks one question. Right? This is truly a pathetic algorithm. I mean, let me put this in context for you. This is like you go into the doctor's office, and the doctor says, oh, you're over the age of 50? You have cancer. <laughs> or you exercise less than three times a week? You have cancer. You eat potato chips? Cancer. You talk on the cell phone without a headset? Cancer. You go to bed past midnight? Cancer. And it sounds eerily like my mother. <laughs> but the crazy thing is that if you put together a bunch of these dumb algorithms, you pick the right dumb algorithms, and you put them together in the right way, it turns out that a bunch of these dumb algorithms actually performs way better than this complicated guy over here. Now, that is not intuitive at all. That should not be intuitive to anyone in this room. I mean, if it was your health, that was, if it was your health, if it was your life that was hanging in the balance, you went to see 50 different doctors, and each of those 50 doctors asked you one question and then made a diagnosis, I'll tell you what you would do. You would completely ignore what all 50 of those doctors say. You would say, these doctors are dumb. They don't know what they're talking about. They made their diagnosis based on a single, like a single piece of information. And then you would go to a doctor who asks you a bunch of questions and gives you a bunch of tests, and then you would say, ah, finally, this doctor, she knows what she's talking about. She has investigated my case thoroughly, and I trust her judgment. Right? The idea that a group of dumb algorithms could somehow perform better than this guy over here is not intuitive at all. So that's the first interesting characteristic about Adaboost. The second interesting characteristic about Adaboost is that it learns from mistakes. So it's a collection of weak classifiers. Let's say it's a collection of 5,000 weak classifiers. But it doesn't actually start with 5,000 weak classifiers. It starts with just one weak classifier. And at each step, the algorithm adds another weak classifier to the collection, and then it adds another weak classifier to the collection. And one interesting thing to notice is how Adaboost decides which weak classifier to add to its collection at each step. And the way that Adaboost works is that it searches for a weak classifier that is particularly good at fixing the mistakes of the current collection. And so in that way, it grows by fixing its previous mistakes. Now this first characteristic, the ensemble of weak classifiers, the word for this in the literature is boosting. And the second characteristic, learning from mistakes, the term for this in the literature is adaptive. Adaptive boosting at a boost. That's where the name comes from. These are the two most defining characteristics of the Ada boost algorithm. Now, in this last part of my talk, I'd like to share about how faith uh, fits into this picture. In machine learning, the idea that a group of weak classifiers could perform really well is called boosting. 
In the Christian faith, the same concept is called community. It's this unintuitive idea that a group of weak and broken people can somehow be really strong. Christian community happens when I say, you know what, I'm a really messed up person. I am a hopelessly broken and selfish individual. I have a lot of problems, my family has a lot of problems, and you seem to have a lot of problems too. So let's just acknowledge that we're messed up, and let's help each other figure out what it means to follow Jesus. And that is the essence of Christian community. The main takeaway lesson from this idea is to not go alone, is to go together. We were made to be in relationship with each other and with God. And we are most strong when we are weak and dependent upon God and the people that he puts in our lives. It is not an intuitive idea, but it is a central concept in the Christian faith that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. In machine learning, something that learns from mistakes is called adaptive. In the Christian faith, learning from your mistakes is called repentance. Repentance is when I say, you know what? I got this one wrong. I screwed this one up. But I'm going to make changes so that I don't repeat the same mistake again and again and again. I'm going to make adjustments in order to turn away from my mistake and to turn towards what is right and healthy and good. In machine learning, being adaptive or not adaptive may mean the difference between your results being excellent or just mediocre. But in life, the stakes are much higher. Repenting or not repenting will mean the difference between a heart that is filled with bitterness, resentment, and unforgiveness, and a heart that is filled with grace and mercy, compassion, and love. Everyone in this room knows both sides of this coin. We all know from experience how our hearts become hardened and callous when we choose not to repent. But we also know the humility and the softness of heart that comes when we acknowledge that we're wrong and we turn away from our mistakes. In closing, I'd like to step back and look at the bigger picture. We've seen a bunch of parallels between Adaboost and the Christian faith. But I don't see these parallels simply as analogies. I see them as the same underlying truth but simply being manifested in different contexts. One of these is manifested in the context of machine learning, and the other is being manifested in the context of life, in matters of the heart and the soul. It's these same principles and truths and other biblical truths that show up in every area of our lives, whether it's our physical health or our academic research, whether it's our relationships with other people or our spiritual walk with God. It's the same principles and truths that point us to what is right and good, and that lead us to a life that is worth living. Thanks for your attention.